Today it is our pleasure to listen to Romain Petrit, who is going to tell us about uh, minimizing combinations of Laplace eigenvalues and applications. Uh, as usual, do not hesitate to ask questions, whether in the chat or talking directly. Uh, we will uh, communicate the questions in the, in the chat to the speaker. Uh, Romain, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation of, uh, in, uh, in this conference. I'm very happy to present my new results. So, um, uh, minimizing combinations of Laplace eigenvalues. Um, Usually, we maximize Laplace eigenvalues on surfaces, and many works have, have been done uh, when we maximize just one eigenvalue on, uh, on surfaces. So I would like to talk about the new results when I do combinations of eigenvalues. So let me give you uh, uh, the context. So I um, work on a compact surface, so a closed surface without boundary. Um, and when you uh, take uh, a metric, Riemannian metric on this surface, uh, we have a Laplacian, which I denote uh, minus the divergence of the gradients. And uh, when we have such a Laplacian, we have the eigenvalues associated to this Laplacian. So it is a sequence of eigenvalues because the surface is compact. And I denote, uh, as usual, uh, the eigenvalues starting from lambda naught, which is the First eigenvalue equal to zero associated to constant functions. Others eigenvalues are counted without multiplicity. Multiplicity, sorry. Um, the first inequality is strict if we assume that sigma is, is connected. So I do not assume in this presentation that sigma is connected first, uh, but it has to be uh, strict here if we assume that sigma is connected. And uh, as usual, uh, when we work for uh, maximization of eigenvalues and for inequalities for eigenvalues, uh, we work with a, a functional which is invariant by dilatation. And here uh, we take this functional, the, the, the eigenvalue times the area with respect to the metric. Or we can assume that the area is equal to one, it's, it's the same. So I, I start to, with the very beginning of the theory, I mean, uh, the first theorem uh, in, uh, this context uh, was given by Hirsch in uh, the 70s. Um, when uh, the surface is the sphere, the round sphere, the, the sphere, um, we would like to maximize um, the first second value. And we have this inequality. So it is uh, less than eight pi with equality if and only if G is a round matrix. So it's a classical result, which is uh, in the family of uh, the results like faber cran for First directly eigenvalue or, or inequality for, or inequalities for Neumann eigenvalues. And uh, the question asked then was uh, do we have um, maximizers for other surfaces? So we did not know at that time if um, uh, this functional is bounded, but by uh, Koreva in, in 96, uh, uh, he get he got a bound, um, which is uh, which depends on the topology of the surface. So when it is uh, uh, oriented or not, uh, it is linear with respect to the genus. This constant depending on the surface, and the times k, which is the, the the index of the eigenvalue. Why we know that it is bounded. It is finite. This uh, the supremum is finite. So I I made uh, something. Uh, um, I mean, this plus this strictly less than plus infinity uh, should be here. Um, so this inequality was known uh, by Yang and Yao, and we will uh, come back to this inequality uh, for k equal to one uh, just after. We can set this supremum, and it is finite. Uh, we notice that the infimum uh, is not an interesting uh, thing because it is always zero. Uh, for any surface and any index. And to do this, it is classical. You, you take uh, sugar um, uh, dumbbells. So for lambda two, it's, it's a dumbbell. And um, you let the surface uh, resemble to um, disconnected surfaces. If uh, the surface is connected, if it is not, uh, it is equal to zero for first eigenvalues. OK, so I think you know all of this. So we have classical questions. Uh, can we compute uh, the case eigenvalues, the, the supremum of this eigenvalue 
with respect to the topology. Can we have a, a precise equality, which is sharp, like for the sphere by hash? And uh, if the supremum is realized, um, is the supremum realized? And if yes, uh, what are the maximal metrics? There is an important theorem uh, given by Nadi Rajvili in 96 when he solved the problem for the torus, characterizes metrics which are critical for the functional uh, lambda, lambda k. Um, if we have a critical metric, then we have a kind of Euler-Lagrange equation um, given by the existence, which gives the existence of uh, some map phi from the surface into uh, big R p plus one uh, with some integer bigger than two, such that um, the norm, the, the Euclidean norm of phi is equal to one. This means that phi is in, uh, the, the target of phi is, it, is in fact a sphere. Uh, we also have that the coordinate function of phi are eigenfunctions with respect to lambda k of g. And third condition, uh, this map uh, phi is an isometry up to uh, make a, a constant dilatation of the metric g, of the critical metric. Uh, so these three conditions uh, are exactly what we find when, when we do the Euler-Lagrange equation, and they mean something geometrically. So um, the first and second condition uh, imply that phi has to be a harmonic map into some sphere. And uh, the three uh, other, when we take all the three conditions, it implies that phi is a minimal immersion into a sphere. When we go in, in, in the detail in, into this proof, the, the proof of the theorem, we, we see that the two first conditions come when we do, um, when we look for critical metrics in a fixed conformal class. We, we just make variations in the conformal class and we get uh, exactly this condition, which implies that uh, we have a harmonic map. And when we do variations of uh, the metric in all the space of metric, we, we get uh, all this, these three conditions. A theorem I proved uh, years ago uh, for one eigenvalue is, uh, has the following shape. Um, if we have some strict inequality, or some strict inequalities, in fact, then there is a maximal metric. So let me give precisely what, which kind of strict inequality we have to, uh, to give, to, to, to have a, as an assumption. Um, so we, we must have that the supremum over all the metric of the case and value is bigger with a strict inequality than the supremum, the supremum on other surfaces, um, sigma prime, which are obtained from sigma by cutting along closed curves and gluing disks along the boundaries. We can get, when we do this, uh, is surfaces with a lower genuses. When we start with, for, inst for instance, Tori, we, we cut along uh, um, the, the close ge some closed geodesic, which uh, uh, transform this into a sphere. Uh, we, we lose genus, or we can lose um, Connect, connectedness. So um, let me make a drawing. It's simpler to do this. Uh, so I make a remark then to say that this strict inequality we need for this theorem is in fact true if we assume um, the large inequality. It is a result by uh, uh, Colbois and uh, El Soufi. And to do this, uh, start. Um, so let me try to to make a drawing. So we start, for instance, let me prove this kind of inequality. So lambda k of sigma bigger than lambda k of sigma prime. So for instance, we assume that sigma prime is this one. Passing from sigma prime to sigma is, for instance, adding some, uh, some handle. And what we do to, to prove this kind of inequality, so this is sigma. Um, we take a metric which is uh, almost, almost a maximum for this, metric G, which is almost a maximum for sigma prime. Then we add some very thin handle, which is parameterized with uh, some very thin epsilon, which is the length of, uh, or the, the area of the disk we, we, we glue here with some uh, thin cylinder. And we let the parameter go to zero. 
so this is the new surface sigma, uh, which has a new metric G epsilon. We can test this new metric here. We have this inequality and letting epsilon go to zero, we have this inequality at, at, uh, at the limit. And we can do this also for a surface sigma prime, which is not connected. This one, this is sigma prime. And we can build a new surface sigma from sigma prime by adding again a thin handle, a thin cylinder, but here it's not a handle, it's just something which connects two surface, two, 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 two connected components to a new connected surface. And we have a new surface sigma, and with the same process as before, we can prove this kind of inequality. So this inequality, so this large inequality is always true. And if uh, it is strict, then we have a maximal metric. So this theorem tells you that um, the only non-compactness, the, the only way uh, the minimizing, the maximizing sequence cannot converge is when we have uh, equality in this kind of... Uh, uh, so me, this strict uh, equality prevents the maximizing metric uh, from converging to surfaces with lower topology. Uh, just to clarify, so here what you mean is that sigma is given that you pick a metric uh, on on sigma, uh, right? It's not the. I mean, the sigma yes. is fixed, right? But it's the metric that you need to fix. Yes. Okay. So here in this theorem, sigma is fixed, and we compare uh, the lambda k of sigma to lambda k of sigma prime, which are built from sigma. And here, um, yes, I mixed a little bit here. What I do is. I start for sigma from sigma prime prime in the proof in order to prove this large inequality. But the process is just topological. You, you start with a, um, a surface sigma here, and we have to compare this to, to lower topologies to know if there is a maximal metric or not. This is what the theorem tells. Okay. And lower topologies means that we lose genus or we lose connectedness. So to build sigma prime from sigma, you start with assume that this is sigma. And we have to compare uh, lambda k of sigma to lambda k of sigma prime for any sigma prime built from sigma such that, uh, okay, you take um, a closed curve here. So this, you cut along the closed curves and then your surface becomes this one again. So this is the same as this one, but we have a, a hole here and you have a new disc here. And then you glue a disc here and here to obtain sigma prime. So you have sigma prime, which is sigma. Then in this example, it is sigma disjoint union with. S. If you if you cut along, you lose some genus. So you have you get sigma. No, not not sigma. You get so here sigma is a a torus with uh, two handles disjoint union of two tori. So it is very simple. In fact, it's just. Uh, uh, question of notations and, uh, and understanding the drawings, but uh, I'm not maybe not so clear. So ask me if, uh, it, if it is not clear, but it's not uh, complicated uh, basically. So you compare lambda k of sigma to lambda k of surfaces with lower topology when we lose genus or we have more connected components. This is the principle of this kind of theorem. CRM has um, many applications. First application is uh, trying to find uh, minimal immersions uh, into some spheres by maximizing the first eigenvalue, for instance. So um, um, it is a result by Mathieson and Seifert uh, for to, to answer um, for any topology. Um, there is a maximal metric for lambda one. And how do they prove that? They prove the, the inequality, the strict inequality we need. So for instance, for the first second value, we have to prove that um, the supremum over all the metric um, of the first second value on surfaces of, uh, of genus gamma plus one is strictly larger than for surfaces of genus gamma. So you have a strict monotonicity with respect to the genus. So I take uh, um, oriented surfaces to simplify it. So I did not uh, assume this in uh, here, but it, it is an example 
of strict inequality we have to prove. So they did it and uh, we obtained maximal metric for lambda one. So it is one application of this kind of theorem. And one other application is um, uh, the, the converse, uh, not the converse, the, the la contraposé in French. The, the, I mean, you assume that you have, so let me go back to this theorem. You have this, this theorem in one, one side, but you have the other side, which is if we do not have maximal metric, then this inequality have, has to be an equality. It leads to the computation of lambda k of S2 and lambda k of uh, the projective plane. So this, the first result is by Karpuchin, um, Nadira Julie Penskoy and Polterovich, and this one by Karpuchin. So let me give a short proof of uh, the first result. Uh, on the sphere, we know that uh, by uh, computation by Colbois and Sufi, that we have these large inequalities. So these large of inequalities is nothing but the large inequalities I gave you before for the sphere. And then from this large inequality, what what we tell is that if they are not uh, equalities, then somewhere you have a strict inequality. So you you know that for some k. Um, you have lambda k minus one is equal to eight pi times k minus one, and lambda k is strictly over eight pi k. So you assume by contradiction that you have this. Then by the previous theorem, you know that there is a maximal metric. And what um, the four authors proved is that we cannot have a maximal metric. Um, because in this case, we must have a minimal immersion phi into uh, some sphere. And we have a kind of ca classification of this kind of, uh, of, um, of minimal immersions. A result by Egeri uh, tells us that uh, if we have all these conditions and they are, uh, they are true for maximizers on the sphere, so we have a quantification of the area and we have uh, this, then um, the, 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 the index of the eigenvalue has uh, to be larger than some degree which appears in uh, the area. And by a simple computation, you get a contradiction. We, I did not detail all the works which have been done in, for one eigenvalue, for maximization of one eigenvalue. So you have examples for the torus, for, for surfaces of genus two, for non-oriented surfaces and uh, many works have, have been done for this, um, but we do not have many works for combinations of eigenvalues. So let me uh, talk about this. Uh, first, I start to give some motivations for it. So as for one eigenvalue, I would like to go back to, to Hirsch uh, because in fact, the theorem by Hirsch is uh, more general. Um, uh, at uh, the origin, uh, it is a combination of the, the three first eigenvalues on the spheres, uh, which appears in the, the Hirsch inequality. So this is this one. One over lambda one plus one over lambda two plus one over lambda three is bigger than three over a pi. Uh, in fact, this inequality implies this one. And we also have this one. And this is this one that I gave you before. Lambda one is less than a pi. Um, and for all these inequalities, we have uh, the case of equality if and only if G is the wrong metric. A question we can ask is um, if uh, we do another linear combination of one over the, the, the eigenvalue, like, uh, I mean, one plus uh, something else than two here, or I mean, we do another linear combination. Okay, so let me go back. Then is there a minimal metric? So here I switch to minimal because uh, I change the functional and uh, I take one over lambda one plus one over lambda two. So I minimize here. So if I change the coefficient here, do we have a minimal metric? And um, if we have a minimal metric, is it the round metric still? And is for um, a more general inequalities uh, proved by Young and Yao based on the Hirsch argument, in fact. Um, but for any surface, so for any surface, we have that one over lambda one plus one over lambda two plus one over lambda three is bigger than three over eight pi d, where d is the minimal degree of meromorphic coverings of 
of sigma on the sphere. Uh, this, um, I mean, it appears in the proof that uh, we need some this uh, this integer d, and we know that uh, this integer is is less than um, uh, genus plus three over two if sigma is an oriented surface of genus gamma. Um, for instance, we know it is resolved by Kapushin recently, 2019. Uh, we know that um, the maximizer for such uh, surface, surface uh, oriented surface of genus gamma, um, which exists by uh, the result by Mathiesen, the maximizers, um, I mean, this inequality, in fact, we do not need uh, maximizers, but this inequality is, in fact, is, is not sharp. Um, it is not sharp if gamma is not zero or two. Uh, zero or two are uh, exceptional because zero is uh, the case of Hirsch theorem, and two is a result by Nayatani and Shoda, um, which tells us that for surfaces of genus two, it is equal to X 16 pi, but this uh, constant, um, is not sharp. Um, and some question we can ask is that uh, for this functional, do we have a minimizer? And the minimizer is, is the minimizer the same as for uh, the maximizer of lambda one? It's the same question as before for the sphere, but more general. Um, I have another question. When, when I read um, uh, the conjecture by Berger, um, which was solved by uh, Nadir Ashvili. So there are many conjectures and there is this one. Uh, if sigma is the torus, is there a minimizer for this functional? So Berger made computations. Uh, so later, uh, Nadir Ashvili proved another conjecture by Berger, which is uh, the following one. Um, the flat equilateral torus is the maximizer of the first eigenvalue on top. And in this paper, Berger asks another, another question, um, which is natural if we look at previous uh, inequalities by Hirsch, for instance. Um, and he made a, an explicit computation um, on uh, this functional. He proved that the flat equilateral torus is a maximizer of, uh, maximizer of lambda one among the, the flat torus. So this is why Berger made the conjecture that Nadir Ajvili proved, but what I am interested in is the other conjecture, this one. So he computes, um, he computed among all the flat theory, uh, this uh, value, and he, he proved that the flat equilateralist uh, cannot be a minimizer for this. So it's interesting to know uh, which one which is the, the minimizer of this function, if it is not the flat equilateralist, the natural one, uh, which is this um, minimizer. So we do not know that this minimizer exists, but if it exists, um, it cannot be the flat, flat equilateral truth. So why uh, this functional is natural? Because um, uh, we take exactly the shape of formula we, we took for Hirsch inequality. And we choose uh, m equal to six. So we have six eigenvalue in this um, functional for two reasons, because it is the multiplicity of the flat equilateral choice. So the maximizer for the first second value. It is also the maximal multiplicity we can have for the first second value. So that's why we, we choose six here. And we have an interesting question in this case, which is striking. So um, let me, uh, give some answers to questions for combination of eigenvalues. So first, we start with the analogous theorem uh, of Nadir Ashvili. Uh, we look for critical metrics for combination of eigenvalues. And I choose for this theorem functional of the shape, uh, something depending of M eigenvalues for some C1 function F which is uh, lower bounded, so for instance, positive, which is non-decreasing, non-increasing with respect to all the, the coordinates. So it is the only assumption I do on this function. For instance, the functional uh, one over lambda one plus one over lambda two plus one over lambda three satisfies this condition. Um, and critical metrics for this functional uh, have um, satisfied these conditions. So if we take a critical metric for this functional, then 
um, there is um, a big map phi into some big Rn, such that the coordinates of these big maps are again maps into some big uh, R nu k. And uh, if we do the computation, n is just the sum of the nu k. Um, this big map satisfies first uh, that, in fact, the target of the map is an ellipsoid, this equality. So the first eigenvalue of the critical metric times uh, the Euclidean norm of the first uh, of, of phi one plus et cetera plus lambda n times the Euclidean norm of an a squared is equal to one. Target is an ellipsoid, and it is this this ellipsoid is parameterized by the eigenvalues with respect to the critical metric. It, we have some multiplicity nu k, which is controlled as before. So I did not say it, but this nu k is controlled by the multiplicity of the eigenvalues because uh, these maps phi one as are just phi one to phi m are just maps such that the coordinate function are eigen functions with respect to lambda k. We have these two conditions and the third one is analogous to uh, the third condition in the previous theorem. Uh, the big map phi is a conformal map. So when you do variation in the conformal class, we have the two first conditions here. Uh, and when you do variations in, with respect to all the metrics, we have all the three conditions. And as before, this means something geometrically. So the first and second condition implies that phi is a harmonic map into uh, the ellipsoid E. And the three condition imply that in fact, it is a minimal image. Um, notice that in this case, we do not have a, an isometry. Um, in fact, the critical metric is not the pullback of the, the Euclidean metric of the targets. It's just a conformal metric to, the, to this pullback. So it's just uh, the specificity of this result. And if we specify this result to just one eigenvalue, we recover an isometry. We, we... Can I ask a question about this one? Yes. Uh, so the, the Nigeria result has the converse statement as well. Right? Yes. So if you start from harmonic map, then it's a critical point. Mm -hmm. Is this the same? Is the same true here? Yeah, yeah, yes. It is the same if you take a minimal surface into some ellipsoid, uh, then uh, it is critical for some function. It has to be critical for some function. Yes. Is it easy to recover the functional? So what's the procedure for? Yeah, so um, I did not give you all the um, condition we get when you look for, I mean, all the condition for criticality. And there is also a condition I explain after, um, which depends on the functional f. And it is a necessary and sufficient condition that make you recover f, in fact. Even, given an ellipsoid and such map, then f is recovered. Uh, yes, then there is some f such that uh, it's okay. okay. And this f can be a linear combination of the eigenvalues and, or linear combination of, of one over the eigenvalues. Let me give uh, the analogous result uh, as for one eigenvalue for existence of uh, minimal metrics. So here we look for minimal metrics again because I, I focus on functionals which have the shape of one over lambda one plus one over lambda two. That's why I, I'm talking about minimi minimization. Uh, it's just a change of uh, point of view. Um, so I take the, the infimum of this and we have exactly the same theorem. Uh, if we have a strict inequality, so we compare this infimum to the infimum for surfaces obtained from sigma by cutting along closed zero digits and then gluing disks along the, the new boundaries. And if we have strict inequality, then, then it is realized by a smooth metric. So as before, and I did not insist on it, but as before, we can have conical singularities. Um, they, they are the natural singularities that appear in this problem. So let me give examples for applications so immediate applications of this theorem. Uh, the first one is when sigma is a sphere. Uh, if you take this kind of functional, then we always have a minimizer. Why? Um, because when you cut along the closed geodesics and glue disks, I mean, when you look for lower topology for the sphere, in fact, we have connected some of spheres. 
And uh, when you have connected some of spheres, uh, this means that lambda one is equal to zero, for instance. So this means that this, this functional is plus infinity and cannot be minimized. So if you compare, this strict inequality is automatic. Um, I also have an answer to Berger's question uh, for uh, the combination, I mean, the sum of one over the six first eigenvalue. Uh, so if you take the, the, the infimum of this functional on the torus, then it is less than six over the maximizer for the first uh, eigenvalue on the torus. It has an exact uh, uh, value because you just compute for the flat equilateral torus. And um, in fact, we have these strict inequalities uh, is exactly the, the good value to compare to uh, the functional for the sphere. So we compare the, the infimum here of the torus to lower topologies. And the only uh, relevant lower topology we have to compare with is just you reduce the genus. So you compare to a sphere. And for the sphere, this, is, this quantity is bigger than this one just because of um, a Hirsch inequality for the three first eigenvalues and the result by um, the four authors. Um, and uh, we have uh, this strict inequality. So we have existence of a minimizer for this functional on the torus. And uh, the metric is associated to uh, um, minimal immersion to some ellipsoid. Uh, maybe, okay, so let me, if you do not have any question on these results, I shall give you uh, so some ideas for the proof of this result. Uh, so the idea is the same as for one eigenvalue, but it is more complicated because we have more eigenvalues. <laughs> but um, we start with the same idea. We reduce the question to a minimize, in minimization of this functional in a fixed conformal class. Um, because if we minimize among all the metrics, the functional depends on, on the metrics and it is uh, more complicated. And here, just we make the functional depend on a function, which is the positive function you put uh, uh, in front of the, the, the fixed metric on the surface. Uh, the step one is to prove that, uh, the, the goal of the step one is just to prove that it's okay to prove it just in the conformal class and then minimization among all the conformal classes is uh, it's not so complicated because minimizers in a conformal class are harmonic map into some ellipsoid. So if you take a, a sequence, a minimizing sequence, which are minimizers in their conformal class, then um, you get a sequence of a, a harmonic map into some ellipsoids. And this sequence has to converge because you have all, all the series uh, on sequences of harmonic maps into ellipsoids. So you, you may have bubbles, but the strict inequality I assume in the CRM uh, prevent from bubbles for this kind of, uh, so it's okay. So we just do it in the conformal class. And here comes the, the, the difficulties. Um, the step two, uh, the goal of the step two is to build a specific minimizing sequence for this functional. So it's a sequence of conformal metrics because we minimize in the conformal class this time. Um, but we do not uh, prove that any minimizing sequence converge to a minimizer, but we choose a specific minimizing sequence um, to have better condition on it in order to make an asymptotic analysis, which is easier. Uh, and we chose this minimizing sequence as minimizers for relaxed rational problem. So I did not uh, give you details, but there are many techniques to do this uh, in, uh, for one eigenvalue, for instance. And for um, many eigenvalues, I show some, some technique to do this, and they satisfy a large language education. And the goal of the next step is to uh, to transform the solar Lagrange equation to have this kind of, uh, of thing. So it's big, big formulas, but in fact, it's not so complicated if uh, using the LR Lagrange equation. So it's the same kind of Lagrange equation as when you look for a minimizer for any metrics. 
So you recognize that uh, we should have that phi squared, the, the norm with respect to the ellipsoid is equal to one, in fact. So it is the same kind of condition as, so let me go back to this theorem. When you look for critical metrics, combinations of eigenvalues of this shape, then you obtain this kind of condition with uh, coordinate function, which has eigenfunctions with respect to, um, to the eigenvalues. So here we have something which is similar when you look for minimization of it for a relaxed, a relaxed violation of problem, sorry. So you get uh, a map such that the coordinate functions are eigenfunctions with respect to the metric e to the two u epsilon g, g naught. And you have phi squared equal to one. In fact, it's not equal to one. It's bigger than one of minus delta epsilon where delta epsilon goes to zero. Uh, it's because we are not a minimizer for uh, all con the conformal class, but for a, a relaxed variation of problem. But if you have this kind of sequence of uh, function of maps with sequence of metrics, sequence of eigenvalues, this uh, package, all this package, then you can go to step four. Is that in this step three, uh, I denote uh, all the equation on phi as vectorial equation. So it's what's important in this context. Uh, we want this function to be close to a harmonic map into some ellipsoid. So we have to think it as um, a package, a, a vector. So step four, um, I just give one step to uh, pass to the limit as epsilon goes to zero for all this package. Um, we want to, to say that, okay, if it is a sequence of a harmonic map, then we have all the theory that make you pass to the limit. So we want to say that since it is almost uh, a sequence of harmonic maps, uh, we can also pass to the limit. So this is the goal of the step four. And what we do is a local harmonic replacement. So we have this theorem by um, Colding and Minikozy. If we have a compact manifold and a map from the disk into this manifold, which is H1, such that the energy is small. We can replace this map by a harmonic map, which has um, uh, less energy than, than Psi. So you minimize the Dirichlet energy on the disk with the constraint that Psi is equal to, is equal to phi on the boundary. And the theorem by calling Minikozy tells us that um, for uh, um, small energies, so it's a kind of epsilon regularity result for small energy, um, then you are sure that you have a unique harmonic replacement. So unique here is very important. And we can also quantify this uniqueness by this kind of, we can have that um, if we compare with respect to the H1 norm, phi and psi, we can control it by uh, the difference of the energies. So it's very good because if we have a sequence of maps which converge weakly in H1, I mean, sequence of, of maps which converge weakly in H1 and shows that the energy converge um, to the same quantity, but then it, converge, it converges strongly. So what we have in the step three is that the sequence of, uh, of maps converges. And thanks to this kind of inequality, we have a strong convergence. Um, so let me explain uh, further. Uh, we apply this theorem to the manifold E epsilon. So it is the ellipsoid uh, we have in the step three. I mean, the, the, the parameters back to step three, sorry. Um, the parameter lambda epsilon is a big vector uh, which parameterizes uh, the eigenvalues associated to all the maps. So eigenvalues lambda one associated to the map phi one, etc. So phi one has coordinates which are first eigenvalues, uh, phi two, second eigenvalue, etc. So we take the, the target ellipsoid we want. And what we know is that phi epsilon squared 
with respect to the ellipsoid norm is bigger than one minus delta epsilon. So this is what is very uh, important here. We can apply this theorem to phi epsilon over this norm. So we have something which takes value in this ellipsoid. We have a harmonic replacement locally if we know that the energy is very small. It has to be true, I mean, small energy, because concentration cannot be everywhere. Um, we have concentration in finite number of points, but uh, everywhere else, we do not have concentration. So the energy has to be small. And then you, you can tell that this map is close to his harmonic replacement. If we play with this inequality and with the equation satisfied by phi epsilon, we can prove that in fact, phi epsilon is H1 close to his harmonic replacement as epsilon goes to zero. His harmonic replacement is a sequence of harmonic maps. So um, when we pass to the limits, we have all, uh, all the asymptotic analysis we, we want, we can pass to the limit uh, in C infinity, uh, yeah. I mean, in C k for any k. So phi epsilon converges, in fact, in H1. So it is sufficient to, to conclude uh, and pass to the limit. So uh, I was in, in the proof, so everything converges and it's okay. <laughs> everything. Um, so let me talk about um, another application of the CRM. Uh, I mean, the, the simplest thing you would like to do uh, if you take combination of eigenvalues. So the, so the simplest thing is to make combination of just the two first eigenvalues, lambda one and lambda two, and to do it on the CRM. So it's uh, still a, a very interesting uh, um, question. Uh, and maybe it's more concrete here. So let me focus on two kinds of functionals. Uh, the functional HS, depending on the two eigenvalues, which is one over the first one plus S over the, the second one. So we make a, a parameter S here. And FT is just, um, in fact, the maximization of linear combination of eigenvalues. So I take one over the linear combination to make a minimization, but it's just, I mean, maximization of the sum. It's natural to do this or to ask for. So what we can say uh, now is when you assume that S is less than two, so for this function, by Hersch, we can prove that uh, the minimizer is just uh, the, the round sphere. So um, Computed for the round sphere, you have this inequality, and uh, there is equality if and only if it is a round metric. The interesting question is when uh, s is uh, strictly bigger than two, and th thanks to my theorem, we know that there is a minimal metric because the strict inequalities are automatically satisfied. Because uh, if if not, I mean, um, the, the the lower topologies for the sphere is just a Disjoint unit spheres. Um, and this would mean that lambda one goes to zero and it's not possible for minimization. We have a minimal metric. The question could be is it the round metric? I can also ask for minimal minimization for this functional. And in this case, it's not so easy because uh, this time, if lambda one goes to zero, it does not mean that uh, the minimization goes, I mean, this functional goes to plus infinity. Uh, so it is not so easy to check uh, this strict inequality in this case. But I have a result, um, which is this one. In fact, we can build a one parameter family of metrics on the sphere. Such that uh, the asymptotic of the first eigenvalue is this one, and the second eigenvalue is this one as epsilon goes to zero. So this one is just you make lambda one go to zero here, and you make lambda two goes to going to 16 pi, which is the, the, the largest egg value you can have for the second egg value. So what I do is just, uh, I, I try to get a sequence of metric, which converts to, to a disjoint union of two spheres. And I, I have a specific sequence of metrics such that we have exactly this asymptotic. And we notice if we use the computation that uh, this uh, scale is not the same as this one. So that if you uh, make the sum, for instance, uh, this is bigger as epsilon goes to zero. And this gives you a positive term for, uh, for the sum. So 
the, the sum of lambda one and lambda two has to be uh, 16 pi plus something something positive. And this gives you the strict inequality you need um, to compare uh, this uh, functional to uh, to the, um, I mean, to, to, to the eigenvalue for two disjoint spheres. So you have the strict inequality. So for all the, these cases and for any S, any T, you have a minimum. Um, now uh, we would like to know which kind of metric we have. So uh, let me focus on uh, what uh, a critical metric for lambda one and lambda two means in this case. So let G be a critical metric for a general function. What we know first is uh, we have some conditions on the multiplicity of the eigenvalues. So the, the, the multiplicity of the first eigenvalue is controlled by three. We know that it has to be less than three. And the second eigenvalue also has to be less than three. This is a result by uh, the, the Hoffman of Stenov and uh, Nadir Ajli. Um, so that uh, the only uh, critical metric and only um, uh, minimal immersion into some ellipsoids are the following ones where the target ellipsoids have this shape. So either it is the round sphere or it is a 2D ellipsoid where uh, the parameters are distinct, different, or a 3D ellipsoid. Can I quickly ask here, so it, it, in the second two cases, we be not equal to Q is P1 then? Uh, say it again, sorry, I did not understand. So if P not Q, does it mean that P equal to one? Um, no, no, there, there is not one or oh, P. Uh, to, so so I assume that P is a, a lambda one of the critical metric and Q is lambda two of the critical metric. So when you write F of lambda one bar, lambda two bar, you, are you assuming yeah. that lambda one is less than yeah. lambda two? Yes, so I did not write it. Okay, so P is less than Q. Yes, so I can, I can write here strictly less than Q and strictly less than Q. Yes, the question. So we must have, I mean, I denoted uh, the eigenvalues as lambda one less than, than lambda two, et cetera. So if lambda one and lambda two are, are different, uh, we must have that lambda one is simple. That's why I have P here. Yeah, so that's and, what I'm asking is that yeah. uh, if P yes. not Q, then P equal to one. Uh, then the multiplicity, yes, is equal okay. to one. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yes, yes. But P is not the multiplicity, right? It's the eigenvalue. Oh, P itself. Is, is the value of the eigenvalue. So I just uh, sure. uh, yeah, simplify the notation, so I, I should have explained this. So it's just P is equal to the okay. first. Okay, yeah, yeah. it's my bad, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, um, and another condition we have, in fact, uh, I did not give you I did not give you this condition in, a, in the theorem when I talked about critical metrics, is this one. And this one uh, tells you uh, which functional uh, you have. So which function F you have. So um, you have that the, the, con the, the quotient of this integral and the area has to be some quotient um, depending on the partial derivative of F uh, evaluated on uh, on these eigenvalues. So this tells you um, the, the the area of the surface in some directions, and this is given by uh, the partial derivative of uh, of, uh, of f. Okay, and thanks to the, this condition, in fact, we are sure that for any f, there is a unique candidate to be a critical metric associated to a two planar ellipsoid. It's not uh, true in general, but for first and second eigenvalues, it's true because it has to be uh, diffeomorphism because we have first and second eigenvalues. Then, um, knowing that, I compare, um, um, I mean, I, I make an evaluation of the functional, the metrics associated to this unique critical ellipsoid, like ET, the unique uh, candidate to be a critical, to, to be a minimizing ellipsoid, so it's the only critical ellipsoid associated to this. Um, and for this one, by numeric computation, we have that uh, when we evaluate the energy, so I mean, FT evaluated on the first and second eigenvalue, we know that it is always bigger than for the round, the round metric. This means uh, that the, uh, the, the round sphere is never a minimizer. Uh, maybe I made something wrong here. So the inequality is in the other side to have this, but well, it's just using classification to um, 
uh, to delete all the cases. We have three cases, one sphere, two the ellipsoid and three ellipsoid. And what I tell you is that uh, one sphere is not possible. It's maybe the contrary. Ah, I made maybe some mistakes in my uh, presentation. Okay, it's the contrary. So we have this inequality and it proves that the round sphere, um, it proves that the, the 2D ellipsoid is never a minimizer. So it's the contrary. So among all the three cases here, we can delete this one when we consider the, 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 the functional FT, so the sum of the eigenvalue. Uh, but then if you compare uh, the energy uh, of the round sphere and the, the energy uh, we have, it is not possible to have the round sphere too. So the conclusion of this uh, short uh, uh, remark is that the maximum, the, the minimal metric is, uh, has to be associated to three-dimensional uh, minimal spheres, uh, to three-dimensional ellipsoids. And this means that the minimal spheres are not planar. And this question was not so easy because, okay, I finish here because it's, uh, it's time to, um, to finish the presentation, but I give you just uh, the last uh, page. Um, so why, what I tell in the last page is that, in fact, we have a pa um, uh, one parameter family of uh, uh, minimal spheres into 3D ellipsoids. So it's a long thing, I tell you. And I cite at the end of the page, uh, all the previous results we have turning um, existence of non-planar minimal spheres into 3D ellipsoids. This is not a question which is uh, easy to solve. Uh, it was solved in uh, 2019 by um, Asofer and Ketover by mean max method and network curvature flow. And they proved that if one parameter is bigger than the others, very big, then we have a non-planar. Uh, and we have a refinement, a recent refinement by Betchel and Pikion, which tells you that you have, in fact, infinitely many uh, um, minimal spheres into 3D ellipsoids, which are not planar. And I proved that uh, there is one, uh, which is by first and second eigenfunction. Thank you for your attention, and sorry for all the problems I, uh, I had. <laughs> Thanks a lot, uh, Romain, for the, um, for the exposition. Uh, do we have, uh, we have maybe some time for questions uh, now? You can either unmute yourself or ask the questions in chat. So I have a question, so uh, very interesting results. Uh, I'm curious if you have uh, analogous results for the Stuckwolf uh, eigenvalues. Yes, I have it. Yes. So yes, what do you get as a condition? kind of analysis. Uh, so in this case, um, the critical metrics are to minimal, uh, I mean, minimal surfaces into ellipsoids with mm -hmm. um, and for instance if you just look at the analogous result as for spheres you can have minimal disks with three boundary into a, a 2d ellipsoid which is non-planar uh, yeah, the analogous result as for well, laplace second values i have more questions about uh, that slide with the extremology condition could you, mm -hmm. could you go back to it it's a slide, the, the, the one about the, the analog of Nadira Shvili for in your yeah. communications. So much before. Um, I think you, you just passed it, I think. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one. So is it, so I'm just curious about the, still curious about the converse result. Um, is it true that if you have a harmonic map to a ellipsoid and you take this metric GC, would the coordinate functions be eigenfunctions then? Right, so you start with harmonic yes. or, like, or a minimal yes, fact, map. If you have um, a harmonic map into a, an ellipsoid, um, you have the equation Laplace phi is parallel to uh, the normal of the ellipsoid. This is mm -hmm. the equation for harmonic maps. And the normal is nothing but uh, lambda phi. In fact. I mean, uh, the, the normal for the ellipsoid. So I, I, I say lambda phi is just lambda is the parameters okay yeah, yeah. You, you you see what i mean so i can write it right, right, yeah yeah i understand that yeah and, and you're saying that this this factor in front is exactly the 
the, the factor in front of GC. Yes, and the is factor the, the, this factor the factor that you need for harmonic map. Yes, and, and here is when you have a minimizer. So the factor here has to be. Um, I mean, the computation you do for spheres that you know very well mm -hmm. is uh, Laplace implies uh, that uh, that Laplace phi is equal to uh, lambda uh, phi. And what you get when you apply that uh, Laplace phi quad is equal to zero is that the conformal factor is equal to this. Do the same computation when you know that uh, phi squared lambda, so this is the norm associated to the ellipsoid, equal to zero. And you obtain uh, that the conformal factor is equal to something. Okay. And uh, when you work with minimal surfaces into ellipsoids, in fact, it is also uh, equal to this. Very interesting. Is this written somewhere? I can look uh, at I wrote it, but I did not, uh, I mean, put it on archive or something like this. So I, I can send you, uh, I mean, a preprint or something like this. Yeah, it would be great if you can. And uh, uh, I mean, if you have Stackloft version and uh, yeah. Uh, the ellipsoids as well it would be great. Okay. Yeah, I would also appreciate it if you could send a preference. They're very interesting. Uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Misha and Yosef, for the questions. Do we have any other uh, questions for Romain? Yeah, I, I was going to ask a quick thing on the question of Berger that you mentioned. Uh, so, do you know anything about the uh, optimal metric for the sum of with uh, the six first reciprocals? Uh, I know that. I just know that it's associated to uh, minimal immersion into some ellipsoid, but uh, I do not know the the values or I mean the eigenvalues, the parameters of the ellipsoid or the eigenvalues. I do not know which one are multiple. Or... But the multiplicity could be that it's entering an ellipsoid of very high dimension, I suppose, right? Uh, you have six. Uh, yes, values, it could be. Yes. Well, right? It is uh, at least six, but can be. Uh, more than six. I mean, it is controlled by uh, the multiplicity of the of, of the biggest uh, eigenvalue that appears. So in this case, you have uh, six eigenvalues. So you have the multiplicity of the sixth eigenvalue plus five, which is the eigenvalue that appeared before. So you have you can have a big. Uh... Thanks a lot. Uh, do we have maybe time for another question? Um, I have a question, if I may. Yes, of course, uh, Rupert. Hi, uh, thank you for this talk. I was wondering what happens if you take the heat kernel. So F now depends on infinitely many eigenvalues. Um, yes. of course, so the ellipsoid would be sort of infinite dimensional, but you know, yes. everything makes sort of formally sense. So how much survives of your theory and do you still yes. get? It's, it's, very, it's a very interesting question. I, I try to, uh, to work on it too, but okay. I know that the critical metrics uh, can write exactly the same thing, uh, just to say that critical metrics are associated to uh, I mean, minimal uh, uh, minimal surface into big ellipsoid into a big Hilbert space. I mean, we can write some kind of uh, thing, uh, but I do not have the tools to prove the existence of a maximizer or minimizer. Um, it would be interesting because uh, many, um, many functionals are given as combination of infinite eigenvalues like uh, a zeta function or, mm -hmm. or zeta functional, uh, depending yes. on the eigenvalues yeah. or uh, trace of the heat kernel or something, yeah. So it's a very interesting question and I, I don't know uh, many things about this. I mean, one thing we can, uh, try to do is to, to take uh, the minimizer I have uh, for a finite number of eigenvalues and let uh, the number of eigenvalues go to plus infinity and see what uh, the sequence of uh, metric uh, does as uh, the number of eigenvalues done. It goes to yeah. the limit or not. It's, it's very interesting because we, we could give a, a maximizer or minimizers for these functionals. Wait, when so you say you a, don't know, sorry. It's a good step in this direction. There is, we say it again. Uh, so uh, when you when you say that there are, you don't know there's a minimizer, you mean you don't know this condition when you uh, cut into two spheres, or you don't know the even without that? Uh, I don't know the, the, the technique to do. Um, I mean, 
the, the fact that the number of eigenvalues that appear in the functional is finite is uh, crucial to, to do the analysis in order to prove uh, the, the existence theorem of the shape uh, is strict inequality than existence. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not so easy. I mean, the harmonic replacement I, I told you in, uh, in the presentation uh, is typically something which depends on uh, the number of eigenvalues uh, that appear. Depends on the target manifold. I mean, the, the concept epsilon not uh, in the epsilon regularity depends on the target manifold. Bert, I mean, since there's a good discussion, if anyone has other, uh, other comments or uh, questions, we'll be glad to hear them. Seems uh, like uh, this was uh, all for today. So thanks a lot, uh, Thomas, again, and everybody for uh, the, the discussion. Uh, we will reconvene.